my name is Kaylin Le and I'm intern from TNY Legal. Today I'm going to talk about the North South gap. The North South gap is the economic gap between the North, the wealthy de developed countries, and the South, the poorer developing countries. And the North South gap is decided by the geographic location. As a nation becomes developed, they automatically become the part of the North, regardless of the geographic location. Today's the North South gap traces its roots to the colonizations of the Southern Wall region by. Europe over past century. Wealth accumulation depends on the millions of basic human needs such as an access to food, water, education, shelter and healthcare. War has been a major impediment to meeting basic needs and to wealth accumulation, generally in poorer countries. Almost all the wars in the past have been fought in the global south. Hunger and malnutrition are rampant in the global south. The global economy of the rich society of the North is growing richer and poorer society of the South are growing poorer. Economic development is the first priority all government claims to have their, on their agenda. Development is the constantly moving goal. This is because the standard for development is what developed countries have. In the mid-19th century, the high tech industry were textiles and railroads. By the 1930s, one critical standard for development was the capacity to produce steel and heavy machinery. Today, textiles and steels are increasingly produced in developing countries. Most developed countries compete against one another in the electronics, computer and aviation industry and scramble to develop biotechnology, supercomputers and optical computer systems to gain competitive edge in the information technology age. So why is not that issue becoming so important at the end of the 20th century? First of all, the income gap between the North and South is increasing. Besides, the goods produced by the countries of the South become less valuable for the developed country. This is why poorer countries are usually unhappy with the management of the global economy because of the small role they play in its organization. Countries do not sustain economic growth and then find themselves rapidly falling behind. Economic warfare may be waged against an enemy country by discriminating against its trades, by blacklisting its merchants and manufacturers, or even by blockading its shipping and by keeping it through preemptive buying of certain raw materials. Economic statecraft use rewards and penalties to shape other state behavior. There may be positive rewards and penalties to shape other state behavior. Positive rewards include lower tariff, subsidized trade, aids, and the investment grantees. Negative sanctions may entail boycotts, tariff increases, trade quarters, damping of surpluses, preclusive buying, freezes, freezing assets, and cut off. So this is all for, all about North and South Gap. Thanks for watching.